Hello everyone, welcome to Biological Sciences. Here we bring you the second video of complete course on cell biology. So this is lecture 2 which is about history of cell biology. In the last lecture, we learn about some basic definitions of cell biology. So you can watch that video and the link is in front of you in the corner of your screen. So let's start this lecture. So this is history of cell biology. So in this lecture we will discuss about some legendary people and some inventions that contributed in the development of cell biology. First is Aristotle and Paracelsus. They were ancient Greek philosophers and they concluded that all animals and plants are constituted of a few elements which are repeated in each of them. Whether they are complicated or not, all the living organisms are constituted of few elements which are repeated in each of them. So they talked about the repetition of the elements which forms the whole organism. So they refer to the macroscopic structure. So what is macroscopic structure? Microscopic structures are those which can be seen through the naked eyes and the microscopic structures are those which cannot be seen through the naked eyes. So macroscopic structures of the organism like roots, leaves and flowers and these are common in the different plants or some segments and organs that are repeated in the animal kingdom in the animals so here after the invention of the magnifying glass magnifying lenses then only the microscopic microscopic structures could be studied earlier that earlier then macroscopic structures were only studied leonardo da vinci who was a painter, draftsman, engineer, theorist, scientist, sculptor and architect. He also contributed in cell biology. He recommended the use of lenses to view small objects. Conrad Jesner was another person who, who contributed in cell biology. He was a Swiss biologist in 1558 he published a sketch of structure of a group of protists which were called foraminifera protists are eukaryotic organisms which are not animal plant or fungus they have mitochondria they can be parasites they prefer aquatic or moist environment those sketches included very much details which could have been used, which could have drawn using a magnifying glass. This was the earliest record of using a magnifying glass in biology. Furthermore, growth and development of cell biology are intimately associated with the development of optical lenses and to the combination of these lenses in the construction of compound microscopes. Thus the invention of microscopes and its gradual improvement went hand in hand with the development of cell biology. So this is the growth of cell biology during 16th and 18th century. The first useful compound microscope invented in 1590 by Francis Jensen and Zacharias Jensen. The, their microscope had two lenses and total magnifying power was between 10x and 30x. Such microscopes were called flea glasses since they were primarily used to examine small organisms and other insects such as flea and other insects. Galileo Galilei 
also invented a simple microscope having only one magnifying glass and he invented this microscope in 1610 this microscope was used to study the arrangement of the facets in the compound eye of insects you can see in this picture so the italian microanatomist marcello malpighi was among the first to who use a microscope they used the microscope to examine and describe thin slices of animal tissues from such organs like brain liver kidney spleen lungs and tongue he also studied plant tissues and suggested they were composed of structural units and he called them utricles so there was an english microscopist Robert Hooke he coined the term cell in 1665 he examined a thin slices cut from a piece of dried cork under the compound microscopes which were built by him hooke published a collection of essays under the title micrographia one essay described cork as a honeycomb of chambers or cells the chamber of cells are now recognized to be empty spaces left behind after the living portions of the cell had disintegrated hook thought of the cells he observed as something similar to veins and arteries of animals they were filled with juices in living plants but his crude microscopes did not permit the observation of any intracellular structure there was another discovery by dutch microscopist anton van leeuwenhoek had succeeded in greatly improving the art of polishing lenses of short focal length he used his lenses in building microscopes some with magnification approaching 300x leeuwenhoek was the first to observe free living cells in 1675 microscopic organisms in rain water collected from tubes inserted into the soil during rainfall his sketches included numerous bacteria bacilli cocci spirulae and other monera protozoa rotifers and hydra leon hook was the first to describe sperm cells of humans dogs rabbits frogs fish and insects and to observe movement of blood cells of mammals birds amphibians and fish noting that those of fish and amphibians were oval in shape and contained a central body the nucleus while those of humans and other mammals were round he also observed the strain muscles leeuwenhoek's observations were recorded in a series of report that he sent during 1675 to 1683 to the royal society of london now we have so in this video we have discussed the growth and development of cell biology i hope you liked this video and understood how some people contributed in cell biology in the development of cell biology i have made one more video which is related to the some basic definitions of cell biology you can watch that video and the link is is in front of you please like this video share with your friends and subscribe for more videos like this we will bring more concepts related to biology and we will stay tuned for more updates like this thank you